Hey guys, what's up? I'm Brian with Fishers Off-Road and in this video I'm going to be talking to you about tire air pressure. Now, that may not seem like a big deal, but I'm getting a lot of questions lately and seeing a lot of stuff online, social media, where uh, folks are driving their ATVs and side-by-sides for the first time in the snow and uh, they're saying that it's handling like crap, they can't figure it out. Uh, they want to know what's the best tire to run. Well, it may not necessarily be the tire that you're running, it could be the tire air pressure that you're running. Uh, I'll give you a couple examples of some uh, tire that we're running and some of the air pressure that we're running and maybe help you out with this. All right, y'all, one of the first tires we're going to look at is the Pro Armor Crawler XG, and this is on a 2020 Polaris General XP4, so it's a four-seater. This tire here, it's a 301015, and if you look at the sidewall, it'll tell you exactly what air pressure to run, and if you look right here and you see these stars, there's one, two, three, four stars, and that stands for ply rating, and each one of those stars is two ply so this is an eight ply tire now something else you got to look at is where you see it says max load 1280 pounds at 22 psi cold as you start to let air out of the tire you're going to start to decrease your load rating and the ply of the tire for the snow uh, we have them down to 15 psi and they seem to be tracking pretty good and handling pretty good the one thing you want to look at and what you want to keep in mind is if you look at the tire you can see how your center how it sits up when you let air out that actually flattens the tread out and gives the tire flex and helps it to bite on the terrain that you're on whether it be snow or sand or mud or if it's hard packed you want a nice pretty much flat track especially if it's snowing uh, you want to make sure you uh, keep it manageable so your machine doesn't feel like it's pushing and what I mean by that is when you go into a corner you don't want the machine to keep going and the best thing to do there is to lift off the gas I know there's a famous saying in the power sports world when in doubt gas it out but when you're on snow uh, and that kind of stuff that that does not apply if you start pushing you'll want to lift off the gas and let the machine settle and get back to where it was back in track uh, if you stay on the gas you're going to keep pushing over here we have a 30 inch mudda in law and this is a sedona tire now this tire is an 8 psi 8 ply so the way Sedona does their tires is these tires at an 8 ply are rated at the 8 PSI. They're a lower air pressure tire, more of a sturdy carcass on the tire, um, but they track really well. They do a good job. They flex good. Now the Mudda in law is a pretty tough tire. This tire, uh, we had it down to about 5 pounds. This thing is so robust and beefy, you could actually let all the air pressure out and it would track pretty good and ride good. So you wouldn't even really notice it flexing like you would a regular tire like this tire here uh, the pro armor tire if you let all the air out you're gonna notice it and then we also have a set of uh, KM threes the BFG KM threes on uh, another one of our rental units uh, that tire max air pressure is 44 pounds and we took that tire down to about 25 pounds and it still needs to go down further if you're on an ATV or side by side and you're plowing or something and you want it to to handle a lot better uh, let some air out and then just remember if you let air out uh, and you're not plowing or don't have a lot of people in your machine as soon as you put the plow back on or start to put more people in you're going to have to air up a little bit you know maybe a few pounds to offset so that way it still handles good rides good it still gives you the ply rating that you need in the tire this bfg km3 utv tire uh, has some of the best information on it of any tire i've ever seen you have everything on here on the sidewall and like i was talking about earlier this is a perfect example uh, max load 1694 at 44 psi cold and then your max load at 1,015 pounds at 18 PSI cold. You can see how it changes your load rating according to how much air you have in. Uh, that changes everything. This tire right here, a lot of people think that just because it's a BFG, it is street legal. It's a DOT tire. This is not a DOT tire. So if you want something that is strictly DOT that you have to have that's mandatory in your area to run your vehicle on the street, you're going to have to almost go with a truck tire uh, instead of a UTV tire. 
You'll see they also have a warning on here about underinflating or overinflating your tires uh, according to the load. Uh, they also have uh, on the side here, which I've not really seen too many tires have this, mixing bias tires with radials on the same vehicle, mixing different tire sizes on the same axle. That's something you never want to do because the vehicle will not handle properly. And also that's going to really mess up your gear ratio if you're running two different size tires. Something else to keep in mind whenever we're talking about ATV, UTV tires and tire pressure is using the right tire gauge to get your pressure. You can see this one here is pretty big. This is for a truck. And then on the left you have one that's good for ATV, UTV, low air pressure tires. Uh, you can see the one on the right goes up to 160 PSI. The one on the left goes up to 20 PSI. Most of your side-by-sides these days, you're going to use a tire pressure gauge that definitely goes up above 20. Like if you're running this KM3, that's set at 44 PSI cold. So you're going to definitely need a little bit uh, beefier tire gauge, not just a standard ATV 20-pound tire gauge. Well, there you go, y'all. Hope that helps you out with your tire situation, how it's going to handle better, track better, ride better on the snow. Uh, so, again, it may not be your tires. It might just be your tire air pressure. So, check out your air pressure. Play with it a little bit. Maybe if you're supposed to run 22 pounds, drop it down to 15 pounds and see how that handles, depending on your load, and then go from there. You might need more. You might need less. But it's really up to you on how you want it to handle and how heavy of a load uh, you're uh, hauling or whatever how heavy your machine is so there you go guys hope that helps you out